Today we shall make a pattern for this flared skirt in Sewist Pattern Designer. Let's choose a skirt pattern template with shape waistband from the menu. If you are not happy with the height of the waistband you can change it by using this variable. Let me zoom in to see the centimeter lines. Maybe just a bit more. We now need to draft this curved seam. It starts somewhere at the side seam, and goes up to the dark corner in the front. I am going to make this skirt narrower as it is very tight below the hips. I just set the side seam to be 2 degrees inside the skirt. The program has changed the hem, drawn a new smooth side seam and thus narrowed the skirt. I am now going to split the lower part of the side seam in two. We shall place the beginning of the curved seam there. To refer to this seam length, I simply repeat its name and add point L. Let us name the two new objects into which our curve will be split. Here's the first point of our seam. I am going to add one more point that will show the top corner of the seam between the gauze. It is below the hips level, and it does reach the dart level and is moved further to the side. I decide to use the point function and calculate coordinates of the new point. First to the horizontal coordinate, x I want this point to be further to the left than the dart point v2, so I first refer to x coordinate of v2, and then to the horizontal distance between v2 and the hips point at the side. Now to y coordinate, which is vertical, our point should be lower than the hips point, and go some 20% down towards hem, so I shall refer to l1 point which is at the hem of the front skirt. If you are not happy with the position of the point you can simply edit the formula and redraft. Let's see how this will work on various sizes. I am going to move the whole seam a bit higher, in order not to accentuate the widest parts of the body. Let's return to our default size and continue drafting. I am now going to find the lower corner of the seam between the gores. It starts at Z1 and goes down. For this case we need the cut function. It draws an imaginary line from a point at the angle you mention and splits the object in two. Vertically down stands for 90 degrees. Just a quick reminder 0 degrees is at 3 o'clock, 90 degrees at 6 o'clock, 180 degrees at 9 o'clock and 270 or minus 90 is at 12 o'clock. Let us now draw the curved seam. It will consist of two curves connecting at Z1. The first curve goes from Z2 to Z1. I want the curve to be directed towards Z1, but not directly at it. It is a curve, not a straight line after all, so I shall add several degrees clockwise. Here's how I refer to the angle of an imaginary line from Z2 to Z1. Now here's a trick. When I want two curves connect smoothly, I usually refer to the angle between their outmost points. To make the curve even more rounded at its lower section I add more degrees to the angle of the first control point. Pretty nice. Now to the second section. It starts at Z1 and goes up to V2. To make a smooth connection between the lines you need to keep the angle of the control point the same. This control point shows the second angle of seam 1. We want the second curve to start at exactly the opposite angle. So I refer to angle 2 of seam 1 and add 180 degrees. 
I will use the angle of the dot at the top section. You can see how smoothly these two curves are connected. They look like one continuous curve. Looking at the front of the skirt, I believe it is not widened here. It is just the corner of the gore that creates the flare. Our hem has been split in two. We now need to make the skirt more flared at the hem. I am going to create a new variable for the angle of the gauze. It is handy to have this as a variable, so that you can easily edit it in one place later, and not go through each and every line of code, and edit numbers. I shall now rotate the lower corner of the gore around its upper corner. Imagine a compass moving your point at exactly the same distance from the needle at the angle you mention. Our imaginary compass will go clockwise, so the angle should be positive. ILL add a suffix so that the rotated point gets a new name. I guess we could make it even more flared. Of course you can test it later on a mini paper pattern, and while making your first muslin. We now need to draw a new hemline of the center front part. I shall use the arc function. It will draw a very smooth line inside the angles I mention. It will start at L1 and go at 9 o'clock, so the first angle is 180. I want the hem to be perpendicular to the seam at the end. I refer to the angle between points Z3R and Z1, and add 90%. Here's our new hemline. It is very nicely shaped and is perpendicular to the center front line and the gore seam. This will be the outline of our future center front pattern block. For the lower side front I decide to use tapered spread. Spread function works just the same way as tapered spread on paper, just with a higher precision. First, I mention the objects that form the outline of the piece to be spread. It's the first portion of the curved seam the second half of our front hem, and this portion of front side seam. I now mention the inner side of the spread. Next, I mention the name of the object that is the outer side of the spread. And now I need to tell the program how much it should spread this to the left, and to the right. Let's spread this pattern block evenly to both sides, and at the same angle as the center front gore. I mention suffix n in the spread function, and all new objects have names ending with an n. The inner side remained of exactly the same length, 12.33 cm. You can easily attach it to the upper side front and the lengths of the edges on both pieces will be the same. Best of all, it will happen so for any size you redraft this algorithm into. I'll add marks at Z1 which will help to sew together upper side front and center front. If you don't mention the name of the new mark specifically, it will be automatically formed as M, underscore, and then the name of the point. Here are our two marks, one of them looks at 3 o'clock and the other at 9 o'clock. I'll also add a couple of marks at V2. We can now proceed to tracing our pattern blocks. I am not going to go into detail about this function in this very video. It was discussed at length in two previous videos we published. Here's our center front colored in magento. Here's the lower side front, the one we applied tapered spread to. Let it be in dodger blue. Now the upper side front piece, with marks at Z1 and V2. Let's color it in lime. And the folded waistband. We'll use the same block for waistband facing. Let's see how the small previews of the pieces will look in the instructions. I usually check the number of the pieces to be cut in this list. The block mark D is used both for waistband and for the waistband facing, so we are going to cut it twice from the main fabric. It also needs to be interfaced. Now let's see how this pattern will change across sizes. It is not too late to make some new decisions on the design. The pattern looks good in all sizes. All seams are of the same length, even those of complicated pieces.
We have finished drafting the front of this skirt. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, do post comments and I will be happy to help you. Happy sewing!